Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Today we're going to make a lure that I just want to make because it's something that's been in my mind for a while. It's not anything I've ever made. A little more creativity, a little less engineering. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this would-be contraption. Let me finish off a couple of details. First of all, as you can see, it's kind of a big J shape. And my intention is that there'll be a spinner blade inset in this hollow connected to a swivel that'll be embedded in the body. Now, typically when I'm designing a lure, I'm thinking about how that lure is gonna perform, how it's gonna behave in the water. And I'm trying to design the shape, the size, and any kind of hardware I'm gonna put on it with the action of the lure in mind. On this one, I'm just interested in the shape and having this spinner in the middle of the body. But I can't just throw caution to the wind on the action. I need to know that I'm not gonna waste three or four hours shaping this thing, and then it's just sort of gonna roll around in the water. So I'm gonna do a few things to try to get some confidence that it'll actually retrieve relatively straight and with some stability, right? So first, I wanna ensure that the tie on eye, the spinner blade, and the tail hook eye are all in a line with the center line of what would be the center line anyway if this was a uniform body. So that means moving this hook eye up here and making sure that my swivel connection is going to be down here somewhere. I'm counting on the spinner blade to give me the drag that normally would be there if the body was there. Now putting the hardware in this thing is going to be a little bit of a challenge but I'll show you my idea for that. Stick around. So I know I want my lure to be five inches. I'll measure the actual size, and in this one it's 15 and a half, and then I'll divide five into 15 and a half, and that's gonna be my factor for scaling down. And then I'll do the same thing for all the other dimensions. And I'll transfer them over to blue tape on the actual piece of wood that I'm gonna use to make the lure. And if I'm interested in doing a little bit of carving, I might even draw in the carving lines I wanna get in there. The only thing that I'm not really showing here, it's difficult to show on a flat drawing like this, is that I'm gonna hollow out this cheek part to allow water to flow across the area where the spinner will actually be. Let's go ahead and cut this out. Now some guidelines. From there, I can pull a center line. That's a good working center line. It's not exact, but it'll be exact enough for sketching in the taper on the front and the tail. Well, with a little bit of sketching and a little bit of help with these uh, draftsman's curves, I can usually fair in some nice lines. Most of the work to make this thing look nice and faired and clean will be done when I'm shaping it on the belt sander. Okay, so first I'm going to clean up these inside part of the cut. Got to make sure I'm not skewing this thing as I'm sanding it back. That's cleaning up really nicely. Now I just need to get these marks out with a larger diameter one. All right, I'm pretty happy with the way the inside curves are coming out. And now I'm gonna use the belt sander to shape the sort of taper into the nose and the taper to the tail. <laughs> All 
right, so we've got the general shape pretty much how I want it. And now I'm gonna start rounding off the hard edges on the tops and on the inside here and the bottom. All right, it's starting to get close. You can see how it's starting to get rounded a little bit. The trick is to vary your angle on the, on the sander and do a real flat angle and then chamfer it over. Keep an eye on your symmetry from side to side. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and continue. Try to get the bottom edge rounded off and we'll get back to this when I'm down to hand sanding. Now I'll use the Dremel to hollow out the cheeks and create a shallow channel for water to run from the head to the spinner blade. All right, I'm pretty happy with the shape. You can see the cheeks go in right there and you can see it's pretty rounded, but it's a, got a little bit of a flat spot there and pretty happy with the symmetry on it. But before I get to the finish sanding, I've got to get the hardware in. And I'm going to make a one piece harness that's going to go all the way around this thing and it's going to get cut in from the outside. So it's going to be a little bit of a delicate operation. So first I'm going to just eyeball in a center line where I'm gonna cut a slot for that wire. And there's what it looks like right there all the way through the mouth and down to the center of that little peg. Bending the wire is going to be a different challenge. And I'm starting off by making a, an eye for the uh, tail hook. And I'll just hand wrap that. And this is welding wire. It's strong stuff, but it's not too difficult to bend. Okay, that's a pretty good twist. It doesn't need much because it's going to be embedded in two-part epoxy. I drilled a small hole right here at the end. And that's to accept the twist. So that'll slide in here. And then the wire will just go around the body like that. I'll have a little eye here and then I'll have to form an eye at the very end. And with that little loop uh, shaped for the tie on eye, I can pull it down and around, mark where my final belly eye will be. I'll cut off most of this excess, leave enough on there so I can have some leverage to uh, make this final twist. And I'm making a loose twist because I, I do find that on annealed wire, a loose twist actually holds better. So it's kind of like a haywire twist. And then to get it all to fit right, I have to make room for this twist. And I'll cut away a little bit of the wood here just to make sure I can get it in there. Back one has to go in first. Now we wrap it around, drop the tail in one. All right. And that's it right there. I just, I'm just going to have to like shove this in there while I like glue it, make sure it's got plenty of room. I might have to carve it out just a little more to get this twist to fit in there. But before I can glue this wire in, I've got to make sure I'm going to be able to put enough weight in this thing to get it to sink because I want it to just slow sink. So that means the wires can't be in the way of me drilling holes because I don't want to put this thing in the water and do a trial and error sink test. I need to do the calculations. And let me show you what I do. First, I take a little piece of the same wood and I just cut a little rectangle out of it and I weigh it. And the weight of this one fluctuates between 6.4 and 6.42. So I'm calling that 6.41 grams. Now I take my calipers and I measure the thickness, the length and the height of the little block. And I make a few measurements to make sure that there isn't a bunch of variation uh, along the block and I'll do averages if I have to. It's 0.885 centimeters thick, 4.81 centimeters long, and 2.18 centimeters high. I multiplied those and got the volume at 9.28 centimeters cubed. And then to get the density of the wood, I took the weight of the little block, divided it by the volume, and that is my density, 0.691. And that's key because now I can just weigh the lure body and figure well, how much weight I need to add. So I'll weigh the, the body by itself, and I get 28.84 grams. And now I can figure the volume of the body by taking the density and dividing it into the weight. And that comes out to right at 42 cubic centimeters. 
So that means my lure with all the hardware on it, the hooks and everything has to weigh more than 42 grams for it to sink. So since I want this to be a slow sinking lure, I'm going to shoot for just slightly higher than that, about 10% more. Let's go ahead and weigh the body along with the uh, wire. Let's include the spinner, the swivel, the split ring for that, the two hooks and the two split rings for the hook. And we're at 37.93 and we're trying to get to about 44 or 45. I'm going to add a split shot here. That gets me to 42.2 and there we are at 44 point, uh, right around 0.5. So these two little split shots need to go inside the body. All right, and they've got to go in below the line of the wire, so. All right, those are embedded and they're well below where the wire is going to be. Now I'm just going to glue those in so they don't move while I put in the wire. And I think I'm not going to do any, any carving. I'm just going to put in some eye sockets. All right, while I'm drilling holes, uh, I might as well drill the hole for the swivel that's gonna hold on to the um, spinner blade. I'm just gonna find the center in here, but then I need to find out where it goes. So I'm gonna draw a line between tie-on eye and where the tail line is gonna be. And I'm gonna put a little mark right here, then I'll carry it across. All right, all I gotta do now is get that glued in too. All right, I'm going to go ahead and glue this wire harness in. What I like to do is go ahead and put the five minute epoxy in this little tiny mini Ziploc bag. And that should be enough. You just use your fingers to knead it. Get all the stuff on the bottom. Cut a tiny little bit off the corner. And I can pipe this stuff right into the uh, slot and the big gaps here. All right, so I've gone ahead and glued the top just like I did the bottom and I've sanded it down well starting off with about 120 grit and moving on down to these little Dremel sanding buffs and they're, they're really kind of like coarse fibers and I discovered them about a year ago and I really love them because they come in four different colors and each color is a slightly different coarse sort of grit. But anyway, they make quick work of this stuff and especially if you have like fine carving and stuff, it, they're really good to go around the fine carving. If you're interested, I put a link in the description and I'm not sponsored by anybody. I just, I like those things and if you want one, you can buy them. All right, so now I'm ready to put a really thin clear coat on this and then we can paint. All right, it's been a while. We're ready to pull this thing out. We've got a good opportunity here now that it's sealed to do a quick float test and make sure it sinks like I want it to. And I'm just gonna hang the hardware off the uh, hook hangers. Perfect, 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 perfect. Now it's time to pick a paint scheme for this thing and I'm kind of resisting covering up this grain, but every wooden lure does this to me. Let's see what I come up with. All right, well, I've been scratching my head to come up with a paint scheme for this thing. I really have not been um, inspired. I don't know why, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start off by turning it chrome with some spastics. And if you haven't seen me use this, I've got a couple of videos using this. Check it out. I'll put a link over here somewhere. All right, let's get started. I'm having a lot of trouble with my airbrushes for some reason. The O-rings are going bad and my Iwata completely crapped out. I got two bad O-rings on this thing. O-ring set for this thing is almost as expensive. Actually, it is as expensive as buying a brand new master airbrush. That's already looking pretty cool. We'll wait, give this thing about 15 to 20 minutes 
to uh, dry and then I'm going to buff it with a nice soft cloth. Alright, it's been long enough. Let's just wipe this down. And this really kind of brings out the added luster. And it also brings out any little blemish you ever had in your finish. I've got one little dimple there that must have been a bug or something. Oh well. I like the way it brings out all the little interesting curves in this thing. So I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to put a line of gold across the eye and across the top of the body and then some transparent green on top too and with a darker green on top. Let's start with this uh, transparent orange. All right, you can really see this going gold. All right, I really like that. Let's switch to a transparent ghost green. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. I'm gonna put some scale mesh on here and I'm gonna come over with a darker green just to ghost in a little bit of scales. Maybe we'll do some random spotting around here just to give it a little interest. All right, getting those clips on was a bit of a chore. Hopefully that does it. It's always so hard to tell. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Just a hint of a scale pattern in there. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and hit the top with the same paint. And this is uh, the same moss green. A shadow around the eye too. I'm going to take some violet and this little random shape template here. And I'm going to put just some random splotchiness right around the eye and back. That looks pretty cool. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. Don't know if you can see it there. Now I just got to choose some eyes for it. What do you think about gold maybe? How about silver? How about red? What do you guys think? Let me know which one you guys would go with. I'm not really sure. Well, it'll have to be a surprise. All right, I clear coated it. It's in there turning. It's going to be about an hour before it's done. All right, it's been there for at least four hours so I really like this color combination I like the way that violet kind of goes with the yellow the gold it's simple but I think it's going to be an effective paint job there's going to be a lot of flash and I think it'll work both in salt water and in fresh I think that ideally it would be nice to have a, a really long willow blade on there like a really long narrow blade I think it would look cool and I think it would give a lot of action and flash and I'm just going to put in a ring of UV resin and use that as glue and then I'll set it with the UV light. I use like my little UV hand light just to get it initially set. So I just wedged it up against that light bulb. That should set it in just a few minutes. And when it's set, you just gotta make sure that the swivel continues to swivel. You don't want it glued in one position. All right, I've gone ahead and put the hooks on. While I was looking at this blade that I originally decided to use, I just think it's just a little too short. And I've got this little semi willow blade that I made, oh, I don't know how long ago, just experimenting. But I think it kind of fits the size of the lure a little better. Let's try this one first. And I just weighed them and they, they're within just a couple of tenths of a gram. So that's perfect. All right, I think that looks a little more appropriate for the size of the lure. Let's weigh this thing. I zeroed it with the little board on there, 50.45. So you can see we added probably three or four grams just in paint, the eyes, and the clear coats that I put on it. Let's take this opportunity and float test it one last time. All right, 
looks like it sinks at the right rate. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Looks like we got a little bit of sunshine. Let's try getting some footage. All right, we're on the dock. Hopefully the wind's not too bad, but there's the lure. Hope you can see it. Uh, the sun is pretty nice, but it might be in the lens. Let me start off by showing you what it looks like from the surface. Kind of suspends nice and parallel. Oh, it swims. Oh yeah, get a nice flash from that. And I can hear it clacking away. I intend to fish this thing more as a twitch bait than a swim bait, but it's a little tough to get the video in this water. It's time for some underwater shots from the boat. In slow motion, you can see that the spinner actually hangs up on the top hook of that treble on the belly. I think the best bet is to go with a single hook there. Check it out. I was goofing around with it and a catfish hit it. Do you believe that? Unbelievable. Just really dude. All right, that was weird. Now my line is all slimed. Gross, look at that, that's disgusting. Anyway, I really think this thing is an absolute pike buster. I think fishing with this is kind of like fishing with a big swim bait that you really, you know, you're not gonna get a lot of bites, but when you do get a bite, you'll probably get a nice sized bass. But I'm really excited to see what this thing is going to do in the salt water. And it'd be nice to get up somewhere where there's northern pike. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you enjoy this kind of stuff, let me know. And give me a like. And subscribe if you haven't. It doesn't hurt. And it helps me. Alright, I'll see you on the next video.